this is me, and I love coffee. The intoxicating nutty aroma, the rich chocolatey taste. Some days I drink three cups, like the average American I am. Other days, I drink more like five or six. But is that too much? First, the good news. It's almost impossible to overdose on coffee. There is a lethal dose of caffeine, but it's somewhere around 10 grams. And the average cup of joe has around 100 milligrams. So you likely have to drink 100 cups in rapid succession to OD. But that's not to say there's no such thing as too much. The FDA recommends no more than four to five cups a day for the average healthy adult. More than that, and you might start to experience some nasty side effects. Uh, you know, most people taking coffee for, you know, to, to, to increase their focus and the concentration. Uh, once you start, you know, taking in too much, uh, you start losing that focus. People start getting more agitated, irritable. That's thanks to the hormone adrenaline. When caffeine hits your system, it stimulates your adrenal glands, which release the hormone into your body. It makes you feel energetic and alert, perfect for a fight or flight situation. But too much can be a bad thing, especially if you suffer from anxiety. But with anxiety, you, you also want to be, be careful uh, not to you know, overstimulate them to or trigger any sort of panic attacks or you know, wake, make things that, uh, anxiety worse, which certainly too much caffeine can do. Adrenaline from caffeine can also increase your heart rate. That's why doctors often recommend against drinking coffee if your heart sometimes beats irregularly. But the risk is really only for bona fide coffee junkies. According to at least two observational studies, you have to drink at least nine cups of coffee a day to put yourself at risk of arrhythmia. And finally, there's the question of sleep, coffee's enemy. Caffeine launches a double threat on your slumber. It blocks the neurochemical adenosine, which is what tells your brain that you're tired. It releases a cocktail of stimulants into your brain. Adrenaline, dopamine, and glutamate. So after downing your sixth cup of coffee, you don't just feel awake, but full of energy. It will power you through that 2.30 meeting, or the last class of the day. But if you overdo it, the effect won't wear off when it's time for bed. In one study, researchers monitored the sleep of a dozen volunteers. Some were given a caffeine pill equivalent to about four cups of coffee, and others received a placebo instead. Even when the volunteers swallowed the caffeine pill six hours before bedtime, they spend significantly less time in the light stages of sleep. And that can have detrimental effects on daytime function, the authors report. It's sort of like it's just stuck in this, in this loop where you're not sleeping because you drink too much coffee, and then you wake up in the morning and you're, you're not well rested, and then you're drinking more coffee just to stay awake during the day. Sound familiar? Here's the good news. If you cut yourself off by two o'clock, you typically won't have trouble falling asleep. That's because the half-life of caffeine is around five hours, and so most of its stimulating effects will wear off well before the lights go out. And if you also limit your consumption, well, then coffee can actually offer a number of health benefits. Research shows that it can help with everything from memory, to exercise, to your relationships with your colleagues. And that's great, because for some of us, coffee is something we'll just never give up. <laughs>